as you can see in the uh, from the opening montage, CNN is shell shocked. I mean, they're experiencing nothing less than a collective consciousness, a collective collective concussion. They are looking at the poll numbers, and they're seeing Biden basically politically collapse. It's like the fall of the Berlin Wall, right? Just one day, everyone in Europe woke up, and it began imploding right before their very eyes. Not really any warning. It was just its time. It, it, it was its terminus. It got too old and feeble. And it just became steadily and increasingly so unpopular that it was unable to withstand the hammers of mass resentment. Poll after poll after poll over these last two weeks, post mugshot weeks, mind you, all show the exact same thing. They all show Biden imploding and Trump surging. I mean, just look at this. Hey, gang, many of you have been kind enough to notice that I've lost a couple of pounds of late. And it's true. I've lost over 60 pounds. I've tried everything under the sun over the years to lose weight. Nothing worked until... I discovered the fantastic nutrition coaching of PhD Weight Loss. PhD Weight Loss is a 100% over-the-phone nutrition and behavior coaching program that I simply could not possibly recommend enough to you. I was able to eat delicious meals all while reaching my weight loss goals in record time. And frankly, it was one of the easiest things I ever did. They completely take out all the guesswork behind what, when, and how much to eat. They make the process painless, simple, and as easy as possible. Dr. Ashley Lucas, has helped thousands achieve their health goals over the last 15 years. And the best part about PhD is that once you hit your goal weight, your maintenance support is free. So when you need that help readjusting, if you start to gain any of that pesky weight back, there's nothing to worry about. They've got your back. Make sure to click on the link below and join myself as well as thousands of other patriots who are taking back control of our health today. We know the demons at Davos want us docile and unhealthy as to remain complacent against their agenda, but your health goals are very much in reach. Speak to the very people who help me become my healthiest self by clicking on that link below right now. The latest premise data poll has Trump trouncing Biden by six points, 44 to 38. The latest echelon poll, again, another poll that Trump has never led before, like the CNN poll, has Trump up by one, 46 to 45. The latest McLaughlin poll, has Trump beating Biden by four, 47 to 43. And in the battleground states, Trump is crushing Biden by almost 10 points, 49 to 41. The latest, the latest YouGov poll has Trump beating Biden by one, 44 to 43. And keep in mind, Trump has never led a YouGov poll. In fact, the last YouGov poll before the 2020 election had Biden winning by 10. The latest Emerson poll, Trump is up by two. 46 to 44, and he's up by five if Cornell West, the Green Party candidate, is factored in, which he will be. Again, Trump never led an Emerson poll. Emerson had Biden winning by five the day before the 2020 election. The Schoen Cooperman poll, this is a Democrat poll by Doug Schoen, Democrat strategist. He has Trump up by one, 45 to 44. And Schoen Cooperman also asked voters how they felt retrospectively about Trump in terms of an approval rating. And they gave Trump a 52% approval, overall approval rating for his presidency. Biden's dwindled to just 44%. And to bring it all home for you here, just to show you what's really happening in the RCP, the Real Clear Politics aggregate polling that averages out all the polls that have been taken out over the last several months, Biden and Trump right now are statistically tied. It's Biden up by 0.4%. And the reason why that's so significant is because the day before the 2020 election, this very same RCP aggregate had Biden up by over seven points. And of course, true to form, on November 3rd, even with all of the shenanigans, Biden vastly underperformed that number. He only got half of that. And so the legacy media is doing what they can 
to help their rapidly dwindling audience cope with these polls. Now, I kid you not, this is an actual headline from MSNBC. Take a look at this. Look at that. How not to have a psychic meltdown when you see the new Trump-Biden poll numbers. That's a real MSNBC headline from just a couple of days back. That's not from the Babylon Bee. That's a real headline saying the quiet part out loud where the woke activists at MSNBC are trying to help assuage their rapidly dwindling audience. How not to have a psychic meltdown when you see the new Trump-Biden poll numbers. Now, the article goes on to highlight the latest Wall Street Journal poll that was released over the Labor Day weekend. This is the poll that freaked out Donna Brazile. And George Stephanopoulos over at ABC, right? If you saw that last Sunday this week with George Stephanopoulos, Stephanopoulos called this poll, this Wall Street Journal poll, absolutely shocking. The poll showed Trump and Biden tied at 46 apiece. But what they also recognized, again, was that the same Wall Street Journal poll, same methodology, same sampling, you name it for their last poll before the 2020 election, had Biden up by 10, by double digits. So we're seeing a double digit swing towards Trump. And what makes it even worse is that this was a poll that was taken over the course of the week after his mugshot. And it just, it went downhill from there. The Wall Street Journal poll, uh, like the CNN poll, fell at 75 percent of voters, three and four, think Biden's too old to be president. Seventy five percent think Biden's too old and he needs to bow out. And guess what? That includes 69 percent of Democrats. Seven in 10 Democrats agree Biden's too old and we need to find someone else. And 60 percent of all voters believe Biden is cognitively deficient. He is not mentally fit for this job. I mean, that's a presidency, again, barring shenanigans, that's a presidency that's beyond repair. That's mo- that's why he's getting Mondale level support. This is a presidency that is in tatters. When a super majority of voters thinks you're too old and too senile to be president, you're done. You're not getting reelected. It was an utterly devastating poll, as evidenced by the MSNBC headline. And so here's what this... <laughs> You want to hear what they said? You want to hear what a headline that says how to cope, right? That, that's trying to help their dwindling audience on how to cope, how to not freak out, how, how to not have a psychic meltdown when you see these poll numbers. Here's what they write. This is from the MSNBC article here. Quote, in the Wall Street Journal's latest poll of the 2024 election, President Biden and former President Donald Trump are locked 46% each. Other recent polls, as we've shown you, have shown essentially the same thing. While there will be many twists and turns before next November, at this point, the race is a toss up. If that makes you feel like your country has gone mad, you're not alone. This is not a feeling we talk much about. While political reporters obsess over the anger and resentments felt by blue-collar white men in Rust Belt diners, liberals' emotions are seldom considered worthy of the same kind of exploration. What freaking planet is this moron living on? I mean, seriously. What is he like? We're allowing men to compete in women's sports in female sports, so as to not endanger their fragile freaking feelings. But I digress. Even those who feel this way know it's an irrational way to approach politics. I could offer you a lengthy and sober explanation of why a Trump-Biden election will be so close. I can give you chapter and verse to detail why it is that a former president who faces four separate criminal indictments, who attempted to overturn a lawful, pristine democratic election, who loses corruption and dishonesty, and who has made clear his intention to practically dismantle the American system of democracy as soon as he gets the chance is nearly an even bet to take back the White House. 
I can tell you all that calmly and reason. I don't know what happened to my voice in the process. I can tell you all that. See, I'm now I'm having the psychic meltdown. I can tell you all that calmly and reasonably. I've done so so many times when asked by friends, relatives, and interviewers. I've written so many articles about the nature of Trump's appeal that I lost count long ago. Yet part of me looks at these polls and wants to respond, not with calm and reason, but with a blood-curdling scream of rage, or at least with a kind of frustration bordering on despair that usually prompts those questions in the first place. You guys, you know, whenever I put as my title, you know, liberals panic over blah, blah, blah. I'm not kidding. I'm not making up. That's not wishful thinking. They're flipping out, gang. Some details of the primary race may have been unexpected, like Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' swift fall, but Trump's glide to the nomination is no surprise at all. Anyone who pays close attention to politics by now has a PhD in Trumpology, gained over years of watching and considering the man himself, the carnival roadshow of his devoted cultists. <laughs> and the more casual supporters who keep him atop his party. We all saw this coming. But when you step back for a moment, the whole picture can seem even worse than it was, like a horror movie when the protagonist wakes from her nightmare only to realize she's still in her nightmare. You know, this guy keeps using this word she and her you know, I'm curious if anyone over at MSNBC actually knows what a woman is. They have yet to actually provide a definition. They keep using the word, but well, alas, again, I digress. My informal canvas of liberal friends reveals that this feeling, something like incredulous despair verging on panic, is not unusual. Well, we tamp it down and joke about it, but it never disappears. Tens of millions of Americans are fine with Trump's brand of revanchist authoritarianism and even yearn for it. Tens of millions more see him as just one choice among many. Maybe they'll vote for him again if the price of gas goes up, i.e. morons. As infuriating as it is to admit the electorate may choose another Trump term, the only answer may be to hold on to that truth. Rejecting reality, coming from someone who doesn't know what a woman is, rejecting reality only replicates Republicans' errors that led to Trump's rise. Exercise your reason, stay informed, understand what's happening in all its detail. But at those times when you want to scream in fear and anger, don't think you're being foolish or irrational. It just means you can see what's in front of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. My dramatic reading of liberal angst and panic. Uh, look, gang, as you can see, you could hear it for yourself. You could hear it in the in the transcribed words. Where they're ab they've absolutely they're losing it. They're lo I mean, these woke activists disguised as journalists are absolutely beside themselves. This wasn't supposed to happen. I mean, you can hear it in the, in the, in the phraseology here. This was not supposed to happen in their warped woke world. There is no frame of reference that can possibly account and explain this fully. This person says, oh, well, we can explain it here or there. But, but no, that explanation smacks against the sensibility, the inclination of their, their woke mind. Trump today, for them, this is the inexplicable thing. Trump today, after... Four indictments, two impeachments, and a 24-7 propaganda blitz by the legacy media, unrelenting, seven years straight. 
Trump today is in a better position to win 2024 than he ever was in 2016 or 2020. Even CNN is admitting this. And they have literally no idea what to do. Trump is polling across the board better than he has ever polled before. Trump is surging in popularity with literally every single category of voter in a way he simply never has before. Men and women, evangelical and non-evangelical, white and non-white, college grad and non-college grad, urban and suburban, above 100,000, under 100,000 a year. With every indictment, with every passing day, Trump is literally getting stronger. 